planting green beans. It's finally time. Get these green beans in the ground out here. This is where our seed looks like. Starting out with some Blue Lake bush beans and we're gonna follow that up by some Roma 2s. Today is March the 15th. I generally plant my green beans on March the 12th, but we had 25 degree weather on March 12th. Too cold for green beans. Soil temperature needs to be around 60 degrees to get the right germination. It takes the green beans a while to germinate. It takes them about nine days, even with the soil temperature at six degrees. So uh, we finally got the right temperatures. We got a big rain coming in today in about an hour. We're trying to get these jokers in the dirt. So when we planted the sweet peas, this is a John Deere 7000 planter. When we planted the sweet peas, we had a different bottom on the hopper. It's called a plate bottom. It's a Kenzie plate bottom with a uh, seed plate. With the green beans, we switched what's called a bean cup. It's a little bit different bottom, plants a bigger seed. These, these green bean seeds are big. So you gotta go to a bean cup to meter the seed out, a different, different seed meter. If you've seen our shirts that we uh, sell during produce season, you'll, you would have noticed that uh, the back of our shirts say finest green beans in the south. That's not a title that uh, I come up with or I gave myself. We don't grow the most green beans in the south. We don't have the highest yield or the most acres. But our customers tell us that we grow the best green beans in the south. So our shirts say finest green beans in the south. One uh, reason our green beans, I believe, are finer than other people's green beans is we don't spray anything on these green beans. I don't put out any herbicide or fungicide or pesticide, anything with side in the name of it, it don't make it on these green beans. You're gonna eat these things. These things are going on your plate. Now, I'm not gonna put poison on somebody's food that's going on their plate. That's just not the right thing to do. So I might could use some herbicides and pesticides and get a higher yield, try to compete in some of them yield competitions, but that's not what it's about. It's about making the best food available. And that's what we grow right here. We grow it the old way. We grow it like your grandpa used to grow it. My green beans, they taste like Sunday lunch at grandma's house. These are the old varieties, heirloom varieties, and we grow them the old way. We could probably get a higher yield with some more high-tech GMO seed and we come out here and put all the pesticides and herbicides out here and get everything dialed in just right, but that ain't the way to do it, man. This, this is your food. You don't want that stuff in your food. So I'm old school here. We still grow plenty of green beans. We don't, we don't run out of green beans. We grow enough growing it the old school way. And I feel good about what I'm putting on your plate. You don't, I don't, I, I'd have a hard time sleeping at night if I put a bunch of poison on your plate, but we don't do it that way here. That's not how we do it. We do it the old way. Hog damage. We've been killing a few hogs out here, but we ain't been killing enough. We're tearing the field up. So all that, all that's hog damage. Hogs are rooting at night. So yes, we do trap pigs for the Jaeger Pro Trap. Yes, we do have thermal imaging and come out here and shoot pigs at night. 
Yes, we keep ARs in all our trucks and we shoot them every time we see them during the daylight. And we do all sorts of other things, anything we can to eliminate the hog problem. But the hog problem is almost too hard to eliminate. We've been working on these hogs for years, years. Once this hog bomb exploded, man, we couldn't get rid of it. Somebody got to do something about these hogs. I don't, I don't know what, what else we can do, but we work on hogs 365 days a year, year round, and it don't seem to do a whole lot. Man, we kill them by the hundreds, and they just keep on coming. My neighbor down the road, uh, Will Harris, told me one time, modern farming is highly replicatable but it's not sustainable. I let that soak in for a minute and pondered it for a little while and that's, that's why I do this the way I do it. Um, what it means by that is you can use all that modern technology, all that GMO stuff, all the best chemicals and everything there is out there and you can make a real good yield, but just in the last 20 years, using cotton for example, just in the last 20 years, what was considered a great crop in cotton 20 years ago will leave you broke today. The yield that you have to make once you go that route, because the inputs are so high, the yield that you have to make is just unbelievable. And if, if, if one thing goes wrong, that's it, you've lost. You gotta have everything work just right in your favor. Everything's gotta go perfect. And then if you get that super duper crazy bumper yield, you can break even that year. You can break even. So I didn't go that route. I, I'm farming the old school way, you know. I'm doing it the old way. That's just how I do it. That's how we're going to keep on doing it. All right, we got both both varieties planted. We got our, our flat bean, our Roma 2 in the ground. We got our round bean, our blue lake. They're both in the dirt. The rain has begun. We got it done just in time. We actually planted it in the rain for a little while. So now we're in haul butt mode to get all this stuff under the shed. We got a trailer with fertilizer on it. We got this planter still got a little bit of fertilizer in it. We got to clean the seed out immediately when we got to the end of the road. Got it inside the truck. Now we got to get this stuff back, get it on the shed, keep it from getting wet. Thank y'all for watching. See y'all next time.